Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on October 20th, 2021 at approximately 11.17 a.m. PST. Well, things have gotten interesting in this world. I've noticed, like, I, I, okay, let's start that over again. Things have begun, have become interesting in this world. Now, I've talked to you about past lives before, okay? And the reality is I return to this lifetime this time to pass on one major message to everybody in existence. And for that, I'm going to require your assistance, if you would be so kind. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel because we've got a lot of information, a lot of work to do. Okay. Now, the the reality of it is this. I've talked about the energy in your body, in in your office, in your house, and the the general way it interacts with with the world around you. But here's the other part of it. And for those of you that are scientists, of which I am not one, at least not in the traditional sense of the word, if you look at the configuration of simple cells, or more importantly, if you take a look at the configuration of atoms as we know it, and the configuration of the of the universe as we've as we've come to understand it, there is a striking similarity in the way it all interacts. Okay, now much of it is still a mystery. But it all works essentially the same way. Now, I've been talking about getting things organized. So here's the way here's the way things are going at my house. Okay. If you look over here, if you look at that shelf over there, I've modified things on the on the top floor. Uh, on the top floor, yeah. On the top shelf. I've cleared everything off the top now, which I don't know if you can see this. Yep, there we go. Just modify that just a fraction so you can see it. And you'll see the top shelf. All the books up on the top are antique books that I've collected. Antique being at least, I think the youngest one in that top shelf is like 50 years old. The oldest one up there was written in 1850, in 1850 I believe. Okay. Next shelf down, I'm still working on what to do with it. Okay. But I will be putting projects and what have you up there. I may leave that as my artifacts. That's for the Elder King Chronicles, the one you see there. Okay. Then I've got the shelf down, next level down, that has the books that are in, that are in the Elder King Chronicles. Okay, that are in Casey's bookshelf. As well as my Tolkien collection. Now, I don't know what's going on the fourth shelf yet. Okay. But... These are just ways of getting the energy in my house, in my office working properly. Right now, I'm currently debating whether to get this shelf over here, the one sitting on top of the filing cabinet. I'm pretty much convinced it's probably going to go the way of the Dota Bird. Matter of fact, come to think of it, I've already made that decision. I just haven't moved it yet. It boils down to taking your office, taking your work area, and eliminating everything that does not work towards what you're aiming at, which is why I've got these two signs here. These signs remind me of the income that I require. Now, for the income I require, I am already, and today is the 20th, I've still got another paycheck and a contract check coming in. So making that 2,500 that I've got listed here that I require, you can't see that, but that's because I tilted the camera again. Okay, where, well, yes, I know, I'm moving it around. Welcome to live, uh, to live video. Like I said, I record these live. I don't go back and change over them. Okay, the 2,500 I listed here. Uh, okay, I'm already well on track to actually acquire it. And I've still got another paycheck coming in before anything else happens. So that's in place. As you can see, my, my sign got moved down temporarily. The wood sign here that says, I am worth it, is right there. But again, we're organizing things to get the energy really running smoothly. So, with that in mind, okay, I did get some other good news today. Uh, last night, actually. 
I have another five of the of the pictures for the races of the worlds that have been that have been totaled off, just waiting for final go ahead on them. And I'll be sending out for the next five. Now I'm starting to really focus on getting the pictures done for the for the original races of the worlds. Again, this boils down to taking a look at the energy in your in your office and getting it moved around. You know, getting it so it does exactly what you're aiming for. Which is why, come to think of it, this second shelf, the shelf that is essentially empty right now, which I guess technically is the third shelf, I will undoubtedly be bringing all of the information I've got for the Ilderbachian Chronicles and putting them on that shelf so it's all properly organized for me. Okay, a lot of work. Yes, it sounds like a lot of reorganizing, but here's the thing. What I have noticed with people on the whole, okay, there's a lot of people out there claiming that they are spiritual guides. And what I find with most of them, and hopefully you're not one of them, okay, most of the people claiming to be spiritual guides put themselves on a, ped on a pedestal and say, oh, I can do this, I can do that, you know, or do, the, you know, do what I'm telling you. But they don't follow their own guidelines. In my case, this does not make me better than anybody. Okay, quite frankly, I'm probably one of the most difficult people to deal with. Okay, I get really badly stuck in my ways. But the tools I'm offering are ones that have been working for me. And have worked for thousands of other people. Okay, and the reason I know they work for thousands of other people is because I've been working in this industry of consulting. Personal problems professional problems as in business, UFO and alien abduction situations, many alien, many ancient races. This is just the way my life has always gone. Now, yes, there is that neat little question of, well, if you're also a science fiction writer, then how do we know you're not making it all up? The question you have to ask is kind of like chicken and the egg. Now, I know what I'm talking about has happened. I can't prove it. But we're sort of looking at the chicken and the egg. Is my experience, you know, are, are my experiences fueling the writing or is the writing fueling the experiences? Well, given the number of experiences that I've had and the number of times it's been corroborated by other people, and, you know, along with the fact that my father flat out told me on his deathbed that all of my memories, past life, you know, past life, my lab, military laboratory, alien abduction, psychic phenomenon, all of that, including the near-death and post-death experiences, he confirmed the whole nine yards was real on his deathbed. Can I go and confront him now, or can I go and confirm it with him now? Not a hope. Okay, not unless you believe in medium work, which I don't get a lot of options on. But what I am finding is the more organized I get my office, the faster my energy is running, which works out nicely. It also means, by the way, I'm sleeping better at night. At least I think I'm sleeping better. I'm sleeping longer anyway. The, the sad part with me is I can go to bed at night, and I'm sure you've gone through this. You're thinking about something when you go to bed. You wake up in the morning, and you pick it right back off the deck. So... If you've got a project that, you, that you've that you been putting off, okay, and Lord knows I put mine off for a very long time, okay, was a professional procrastinator. But if you've been putting a project of yours off for whatever reason, now is the time to start altering putting it off. It's time to get back on the track and start moving. Okay, and what I mean by that is if you've been putting your life on hold because somebody else said you should, Unless there is a legal or medical reason to put it on hold. It may be in your best interest to start seriously looking at replanning it. You know, reawakening those drives. And I'm talking about the ones that are karmically balanced. Okay, in other words, three karmic laws. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. And energy out, energy in. 
Now, if you follow those three laws, compare them to all the laws you deal with. What I've found is getting rid of the junk and clearing out of the way so I'm not even looking at it here makes me feel a whole lot more productive. Now, where it comes to the writing, I've been I've been moving ahead with a lot of things. Today, I was going through some of the pieces I had to adjust, going back through them. So they on the on the end of an epic, which is the one I'm in final edit for. Okay, and yes, I have to get back on track and posting that side of it as well. Okay, so when I take a look at those. At that work, I'm going through in. I'm just tying off the last one when I get done here. Come to that. I keep saying I've got to get these other videos done or these other posts done, which, frankly, they are right on my list next. I've still got a few hours before I have to get back on shift, you know, before I have to log back in and do my regular work. But with this in mind, we'll get back to the idea of where do you go from here? Whatever project you've been putting on hold, if you've been dreaming of starting your own business, there are a number of things that you have to look at. And where it comes to business, let's see if I can find it here on the first run. Nope, second run. This funny little booklet, okay. This, this booklet I wrote myself, I put it in this form so that I could actually send it off to people if they desired it. Now, if you've got questions, if you're curious as to where to start, Okay, I will tell you, where to start is right where you are. When to start is right now. Okay, postponing it doesn't do you any good. Okay, and you know, on the whole. Now, do understand, I am not talking about spending a whole pile of money that you can use. And this is why when I talk about giving people tools that work, I'm not saying I'll give it to you at the end of the, of the video. And send me X number of dollars, I'll give you the give you the information. Okay, if you've got questions, you know, whatever you think of the videos, I would love to see it in the comments below. Because I do check them. And in case you haven't noticed, for those of you that have been watching, I do watch what the questions are and I do my best to respond to them. Now, if you've asked me a question in in one of my private connection points, or more than well, I guess a private, they're non public. At the bottom of this video, you'll see you'll see a whole list of different contact points that you can reach me at. Facebook, email, Skype, Twitter, LinkedIn. But if you're going to drop me a line, absolutely. If you reach out, leave some sort of note that tells me where you're where you're coming from. Okay. Now here's the thing with reaching me. Okay, one of the very big things. I get videos, I get connections live from people on Facebook, okay, with that are leading to X-rated sites. I do not accept them, okay, that's not my bag, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's one of those, it's one of those things that I just do not bother accepting. I've got no interest in it. Okay, yes, that makes me a little weird to some people, but hey, I'm a little weird to a lot of people. But if you've got a project that you're looking at starting, if you've got a business idea, business ideas are great. But remember one little detail. Start your business on the side. Do not make the mistake of quitting your stable income unless you've got no other option before you start and start your side, the, the business. Really work it out. Now, this little book here, like I said, this one here, Believe in Your Business and Follow Your Dreams. Okay, I go through the basic things to step on to take a look at. Now, I'm not I'm not a massive business guru. I just know what I've been doing. I know what I've been doing is working. And I know my energy level is starting to climb. Net result, my weight is really stable. My blood pressure is right down where it belongs now. Okay, I've still got some things I'm working on. But... Sitting around and going, I should get into this, or I really would like to do this. Stop just talking about it. Get it on paper in present tense and start working towards it. Eliminate the things that are holding you back or alter them. Part of what has been holding me back has been the state of my office. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, like when I look over here, I've got 
The bottom shelf, I've got a few more, and you can't see it, and I'm not about to try and get down there. It's one shelf below the one you can see. I got one more shelf to clear off down there. And then that whole shelving unit is set up the way I desire it for my business, for my life to change direction. Then I'll go over here and wipe out everything up there. So, and it's not just a question of moving it to a different location. It's a question of getting rid of it, okay, if you don't require it. And here's one of the neat things about some of the stuff in boxes, especially if you've been a pack rat for a long time. Basic rule of thumb I go with is, except for, for um, holiday decorations that only come up once a year, and actual keepsakes that you really want to hang on to. Okay, usually that means childhood keepsakes, but if you've got a relationship that's come apart, clearly some part of it was good. Okay, sometimes, you know, keeping the memorabilia around is great. I've had some relationships where I had no interest in, like, when they came apart, yes, there were good things about them, absolutely. Okay. But those are held in my memory. I don't need the, the memorabilia around for them. Other ones I hang on to because of the fact that they mean a little more. And again, I hang on to the things that are positive. Okay. By hanging on to the energy, by hanging on to the memories and the, and the odds and ends that, that enhance those memories. Okay. You're focusing on the positive. And like I said, you minimize the negative, you maximize the positive. By doing that, you will actually change the way your life is running. You'll change the energy level you're dealing with. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. By doing that, you will be able to sort things out and get your life running properly. It will also make it easier for you to cope with the world outside. Because even being as reclusive as I am, I still have to deal with outside being with outside people. Now I'm quite can, quite happy with myself about one little detail. It's a real small detail for most people. I've already said I don't like going out much, but I'm finally starting to get to the point where I can actually do some of my shopping over the internet. For me, that is a massive jump forward. Okay, it's a pain in the neck in a lot of ways, but what the heck? Okay, so with that in mind, okay, I am eliminating the things that are holding me back. And the other thing that, I, that it's also doing is it's helping with my, with my son to get him straightened around with the one that still lives with me. The other one, don't know it's helping him that much. But that does remind me I do have to contact him about something else that showed up here. Anyway. Eliminate the things like alter the path that you're on. Okay, you can only do it in the here and now. Even if you postpone it for a week or two weeks or six months or I'll start my diet on Monday. Bad idea. No matter when you do it, it's always right here, right now. And that is something that we are all in the same boat with. No matter how you got to where your life is right this moment. You're at, at this point right now. You can't alter how you got here. But you can certainly alter the path you're on. You can change what the future is going to produce by simply making adjustments. You look at your past, see what decisions you made in the past, and where they led you to at this point. By doing that, by understanding where you came from, you're going to be better equipped to make decisions to lead you to where you desire to be. And again, if you're aiming at doing something that's new to you, talk to somebody that has done it successfully. Now, this does not mean that just talking to somebody will do, will do you any good. The reality is all the tools in the world of any benefit aren't going to be of any use if you don't pick them up. Now, I can tell you, clearing out the energy in my office is working fabulous for me. Listening to some of, I, I like it when people go this, you know, I don't want to offend, and I've done this before. I don't want to offend you, and then you say, but, you know, but here's what's wrong. Like, <laughs> I saw a t-shirt the other day, it was priceless. It goes, 
I'm sorry I upset you. I'm I'm sorry I'm upset you and that I upset you when I called you stupid. But I honestly thought you already knew. Now, you know, that's written on a t-shirt. And honestly, from my standpoint, I have a tendency of putting my foot in my mouth. It, it, to me, it's not a question of am I going to do it. It's a question of how am I going to get the other one in there with it. Okay. I often question, you know, people ask me how I deal with it, you know, how I cope with, with the fact I see the world differently. And, you know, I question that myself because I'm still trying to figure out if, did I, you know, did I become reclusive because I don't understand people or because I do? Okay. When I wrote my, my channeled autobiography, which is not in functional print right now, I've got a few copies of it here. But when I wrote it, I originally wrote it quite by accident. The methodology behind it doesn't matter. But up until I actually wrote the thing, I'd always assumed that people, as I, when I was growing up, that people had shunned me, that they had excluded me from, from their, their games and what have you. When I got the channeled autobi autobiography written, and I actually read the thing, what I discovered was the shocking reality that I had isolated myself from the people around me. Okay, and it's the one book that I have absolutely decided there is not a snowball's prayer that I will correct the spelling mistakes in it. Okay, but what I found when I got looking at my past is that I created most of my current problems. I, I could look at other people and go, it's all their fault. Okay. The guy that held me up at knife point when I was 14. It was his fault he pulled the knife on me. It was my fault the way I reacted. That was my choice. And trust me on this, what I did was just absolutely bizarre. Okay. Um, it sounds funny, and if it weren't for the fact that we're real, it'd be funnier than heck. But it's like I've told many parents. You know, many parents, many teachers. When, you, when a student gets to class... And the teacher goes, you know, what happened to your, you know, why isn't your homework done? And he gives this excuse, well, my dog ate it. Now, just about every, especially in elementary, mo just about every elementary student teacher has come across this, where the kid says, I didn't bring my homework in because my dog ate it, which sounds like a, like a, just an excuse. Until, after a little bit of research, you find out the dog, in fact, ate the homework. Okay. But by changing the energy in your house, by getting to understand you, I love the way a friend of mine put it years ago. Okay. And what he, what he said was, he says, to know oneself is to know all. And really what that came to, it came to mean to me was that if I could figure out what was making me tick, what was setting me off, then I would know what was likely setting off other people. Net result, I've been in the consulting business for 48 years. I started when I was 10, I'm 58, now you do the math. At 23, I went professional, as in started generating an income. By started generating an income in doing consulting work. Then in, I don't even know when, did I put a copyright date on these? I don't know. I know Birth of the Wolf Pack came out in 2019. Just checking to see if I've actually got a date on this one. Uh, give me five seconds here. No. Nope. Not at the front anyway, maybe I wrote it in the back. Uh, yeah, this one, okay, that's Believe in Your Business and Follow Your Dreams. It, I wrote it in 2018. So, since it was second out, this probably came out in 2017. This one is Believe in Yourself and Follow Your Dreams. And this one, yeah, wouldn't you know, missed a page. There we are. Uh, where are we? Nope, this one came out in 2018 as well. So in 2018, I started putting my information on in booklet form so that I didn't have to repeat myself to everybody. I could just say, here, if you want the full package, here's the, here's the booklet. Okay. 
There is a list of books underneath this video of the ones I've already got in print. And of course, there's a list of ways of getting a hold of me right below that. Okay, overall, what I've done is I've slowly, one step at a time, got the energy in my, in my world working so that I'm happier, so I'm more content, and so that I can move forward. Now, by you doing the same thing, if we do this in little pockets all over the place, I make my world a little bit more comfortable. The people I have to, that I deal with will have a slightly better day. Okay. And if you work in any industry where you deal with people at all, which means if you've got a business, you're working in that industry. Or if, you're, if you've got a job, you're working in that industry. If you're having a good day, you treat people in one fashion. If you're having a bad day, you treat them in another one. And that is just the way of life. Okay. People that are that are sick, okay, are inherently more temperamental than people that are healthy. People that are unhappy are more more apt to help people or to help if they're happy than they are if they're unhappy. Now, is depression a real thing? You bet. Is seasonal depression a real thing? You bet. But what most doctors won't tell you is one of the best coping mechanisms I ever came up with for, for depression. Because I fought my own. Okay, I've fought depression for years. Okay, but I found a way to actually overcome it. When I start feeling really down, no matter how down I'm feeling, okay, I take the fastest dance-paced music I can find, crank it as high as socially acceptable, and let it run. The vibratory rate of the music brings your anger mood level up. You don't believe me? Give it a shot. Don't just take my word for it. I use that in place of any type of medication that is out there. Okay. Now, the thing is, if you're using medication, remember, the fact you're feeling better while you're on medication is probably because you're on the medication. So keep with it. Alter the way you're looking at the world. Your requirement on the medication will shift okay now these are simply tools that i live that i personally put to use and philosophies that i personally live by with that in mind if you haven't given these methods and if you haven't made the effort and you know exper experienced these methods absolutely give them a shot if they work fantastic okay the fact is i get a lot of people coming to me and they say, I've tried everything. Well, the fact that they're trying, there's a lot of really good, real good spiritual guides out there. Really good ones. But if you're still looking, you haven't found the one you're seeking. Now, I mentioned yesterday that it's time to get, I, you know, I got accused of, start, of trying to start a cult by telling people to be nice to each other. So I figure let's run with it and let's get one started. Regardless of what religion you are, regardless of what of what spiritual path you're on or what your bank account looks like, start treating people the way you desire to be treated. If you desire people to be honest with you, be honest with them. You know, if you desire people to help uh, to to help to, to lend you a hand when you require it, then when you come across people that require a hand, get their help. You know, give them help. You know, it is just a question of, you know, where you feel, where you see somebody is requiring assistance, talk to them, smile at them, give them a hand. And if you want to chalk that up to me starting a, starting a cult, absolutely. If we're going to start a cult, let's make it about being nice to each other. And how about if we start a secondary pandemic? When you're out and about and you're dealing with people, smile at them. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Just start smiling at people. Okay, if you're feeling down, smile at them. If, if it feels like you, like you just don't feel like smiling, do so anyway. It may look fake, but eventually, at some point, it'll start to turn and transform. Okay, now, that said, I've got a lot of things i got to get done today. you got a lot of things to do. So I will talk to you again tomorrow, and until then, take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.